Dear friends, your attention if I may. I prepared my notes, so if you'd be so kind as to move through to the dining room and take a seat, we can begin. Now then, has everyone got their drinks yet? No? Dear me, I am sorry. Such is the price of the war, I'm afraid. Only one footman can only serve so many people in a given space of time. Let's see, what time is it? Mm, later than I'd hoped already. You must forgive me, but we really should get started. Ah, Matheson, there you are. Some of these good people are still awaiting their drinks. Very well, I'll deal with it, Sir Charles. All right, so, first off, welcome back to the third party engineering and acquisition of British Armour Group. I am very glad, indeed, that so many of you could make it, despite the invasion. I know that some of you have had to come a long way, too, in dangerous circumstances, for which I am particularly grateful. My friends, these are times none of us ever dreamed that we would see, and yet, even as we speak, the Hun seethes just fourteen miles south of this hall. As daunting as that may sound, resistance to the invasion remains strong, and I am pleased to be able to report that we have successfully thwarted the enemy's blitzkrieg strategy. In no small part, thanks to the tanks designed by members of this present company, for which your country is eternally grateful. Why, only three days ago, a successful counter-attack was made behind enemy lines by glider-borne Kriasir light tanks, knocking out a power station at Maidstone which, as you know, has become host to the Jerry's Command and Control Centre for the push towards London. The momentum of the invasion elsewhere has petered out, and the ground we lose to the Germans has dwindled to only a handful of square miles per day now. Crucially, London stands. What few Valkyrie Castellan tanks we've been able to make so far have been posted to the southeast side of the city, and have already proven their mettle in battle. There have been two pushes towards London, and both have now been successfully repelled in no small part thanks to our newest infantry tank, whose armour Jerry has no answer for, save for ground attack planes. The RAF is, consequently, all in on maintaining air superiority over London, so that ground attack aircraft cannot get to these tanks. So long as our flyboys can keep the Stukas away, then the Castellan tanks are nigh invulnerable, and we can rest assured that London will be safe, at least for the time being. Meanwhile, we are slowly managing to produce the complex but highly effective Tulov Trident. Once a sufficient number has been completed, these will be used to equip a new elite tank unit, which will be used as a spearhead of our counter-attack against the Germans when the time comes. Despite the stalled blitzkrieg and favourable situation regarding the defence of the capital, the Prime Minister is under considerable pressure to reduce the pressure ha, uh, on London. He approached me two weeks ago with his proposed plan. While the details of that plan are obviously classified, and you do not need to know them, what I can tell you is that it requires the invention of a self-propelled heavy cruiser gun. Yes, you heard me right. Churchill wants a heavy cruiser gun mounted on an armoured fighting vehicle, so as to bring an overwhelming amount of long-range firepower to bear against the Bosch's footholds along the Dover Road. Specifically, we are referring to the BL 7.5-inch gun Mark VI, there are 25 of them currently laid up in storage, formerly of the Hawkins-class heavy cruisers. While two of the Hawkins-class are to have their guns restored for wartime service, and three of the guns have been installed as coastal defence guns at South Shields, the remaining 25 7.5-inch guns are lying fallow, and the PM wants them turned on the Hun, and quickly. Now, I'm sure I don't need to tell you that this is a big ask. The BL 7.5-inch Mark VI is over 26 feet long, and weighs in excess of 10 tonnes. To fit such a large weapon to an armoured vehicle is almost unprecedented. I had initially intended to give the task to Mr. Tulov here, who, following a run-in of the unfortunate kind with MI5, is now in my custody under house arrest until further notice. I thought it the perfect job to exercise his famous mind during his house arrest. But alas, he insists on having the gun be mounted in a rotating turret. This is, in my view... Absolute folly. It cannot be done safely or effectively or reliably. So you can get that idea out of your heads right now. I want these guns in stable casemates that can take the punishment, all right? To wit, I now turn to you to do what Tulov here is unfortunately too stubborn to do. 
I can only hope he proves more useful in, to me in helping me assess these design proposals you bring to us. All right. I can see you're getting restless at the thought of such a task. Please do remember that only a very limited production of 25 vehicles is required, or even possible, for there are only so many guns. So don't panic, all right? Between you and me and the wall, I'd say this is a little more than an exercise in raising morale. A photo op, if you will. Naval firepower brought to bear inland... It doesn't sound very practical from a military standpoint, but with the enemy at the gates, I wager its poetic and symbolic value is worth making these machines actually decent. It's no good just looking the part. Let's surpass expectations. Let's make these old guns dangerous again, shall we? Well then, without further ado, please see the following specification. Armour thickness should be sufficient to repel the 20mm auto cannons of the enemy's light panzers. But that's all that's required as far as armour is concerned. These shouldn't be getting shot at. As ever, you'll have to keep to the weight and size restrictions imposed by the railway, however. Ah, and yes, I should also mention that we have been asked to find use for the already completed Meadows DAV Flat 12 engines now that the Covenanto, which they were originally intended for, has been cancelled. And it's just as well, really. I mean, <laughs> that design was rapidly becoming overcomplicated. Didn't look right. Anyway, so, you've got a choice of engines this time. And all of the parameters are entirely your choice, if they are not listed in the specification. Vehicles that do not meet the fixed criteria in any of the categories will be disqualified, scoring zero for that category. So please do read the specification very carefully before you set to work. Your deadline, ladies and gentlemen, is a fortnight from today, so that's, uh, uh, oh, it's actually my wife's birthday. Must make a note of that. <clears throat> uh, your deadline is the 22nd of February, people. As ever, I'm happy to take any further questions from you. <laughs> Air raid. Dash it all. Right. Matheson, right on cue. I'll lead these good people down to the shelter. Please make sure that Mr. Tulov uh, meets us there promptly, would you? I wouldn't want him getting any ideas in the chaos, eh? Now then, don't panic everyone, I had the local shelter built to my very own specifications, it's rather excellent, and very close, so quickly now, follow me.